In Staten Island, high school student Venus checks her email and discovers she's been accepted to CalArts for photography. She starts typing a reply but hesitates, not knowing if to accept or not because she doesn't want to leave her mother alone. At that moment a notification shows her that her crush JP tagged her on social media in a photo she took, so she gives it a like. Then Venus receives a video call from her friend Sydney and they chat about various topics. Sydney mentions a new online game called Nerve, which everyone is crazy about. Venus checks a video about it and a robotic voice explains people must complete weird challenges to get paid. When signing up, the users can choose to be an anonymous watcher or a player. Sydney loves it, but Venus finds it sketchy. Afterward Venus goes to the kitchen and discusses the matter of college with her mother Nancy, who doesn't know Venus has applied to CalArts. She thinks her daughter will study in Staten Island and they can still live together. Venus suggests renting her dead brother's room but Nancy refuses, still not having gotten over the loss. Later Venus goes to the student's football match to take photos for the school newspaper. Sydney asks someone to film her for nerve before meeting with her fellow cheerleaders. The squad starts the usual routine, but by the end of it, Sydney surprises everyone by showing her naked rear. It turns out that was a dare from the game and she's been paid for it. Soon teenagers all over the country are doing really dumb things to win some bucks like eating dog food, grabbing onto a police car while skating, and jumping off a cliff. When a person joins as a player, the game takes all of their data and customizes the challenges accordingly. Those who sign up as watchers pay to watch the videos and follow the competition to discover who will get to the finals. Watchers can also offer ideas for dares and are encouraged to film the players. After the match, Venus and her friends go to a fast food restaurant and an argument ensues over the morals of the game. Sydney uses the chance to point out Venus never gets out of her comfort zone, so she's merely a watcher in real life. When Venus protests, Sydney dares her to ask JP out. Venus refuses, so Sydney goes to tell JP that Venus likes him. Unfortunately JP explains Venus isn't his type, so a heartbroken Venus rushes out of the restaurant. She screams while riding her bicycle and the texts for her friends make her angrier. When she gets home, she's so desperate to prove she's better than this and decides to sign up on Nerve as a player. The robotic voice starts by explaining the rules, the two players with the most watchers go to the finale, all dares must be filmed to be approved, a player will get eliminated if they fail or bail, and snitches get stitches. Next the game asks for her fingerprint and automatically creates her profile by using all her private information from the internet, from her favorite books to her bank account information. The first dare she gets is kissing a stranger in a diner for $100, so Venus calls her friend Tommy to give her a ride. Tommy warns her that some kids died because of nerve but Venus doesn't believe it because it would have caused the game to be shut down. Using his knowledge from the dark web, Tommy explains that the game can't be stopped because everybody that logs in becomes a new server. At the restaurant, Venus takes too long to decide on a person and her phone reminds her that she has a time limit. In the end she chooses a guy named Ian because he's reading her favorite book. Venus starts talking about the book to get Ian's attention and interrupts herself to suddenly kiss him while Tommy records her. She counts the seconds in her head and once it's over, she goes back to Tommy to confirm she got the money. Then music starts playing in the restaurant and Ian sings along, dancing on the seats as he looks at Venus. She thinks he's singing to her, but Tommy clarifies this is also a dare. Ian successfully gets his money and sits with the duo after he's done, explaining someone gave him the book as part of the dare. At that moment Ian and Venus both get a new message daring them to go to the city together for $200. Venus turns it down, saying she only wanted to do one to fool around, and Tommy backs up her response. Ian implies Venus does things because her friends tell her to and leaves. Hurt, Venus follows Ian to the parking lot and warns him she isn't the daredevil type, but he wants her to come along anyway. The duo gets on Ian's bike and crosses the bridge to reach the city, recording the whole thing. Meanwhile Sydney is hanging out with friends while doing another dare that entails pretending to fart on people using an app. She's gaining lots of fans for this, but her mood drops a bit when she notices that Venus has joined the game and is quickly getting watchers too. When the ride is over, Venus and Ian split to follow their new dares. Her next challenge is to try on a dress from a very fancy store. As she enters the store, Nancy gets notifications because their joint bank account is receiving money under Venus' name. She tries calling her daughter, but Venus ignores her and finds the dress. She almost takes it off the mannequin, but a clerk comes over and gives her another copy. Venus rushes to the changing room and records herself as she puts her dress on, winning the dare just in time. Then she looks in a mirror, liking what she sees. At that moment she's found by Ian, who also got a dare to try on clothes. While he takes a video of her for his fans, Tommy is still worried about Venus' safety and signs up on Nerve as a watcher to keep an eye on her. Ian and Venus decide to have some fun finishing their outfits with shoes and while they're distracted, player Ty steals their clothes from the changing rooms for another dare. Soon Venus and Ian notice their clothes are missing and at the same time they get a dare for $2,500 telling them to leave the store. These clothes are too expensive for their budgets, so instead they decide to leave them behind and sneak around in their underwear. At first nobody sees them, but eventually they're busted and have no choice but to run to the exit while everyone watches. This gets them tons of fans. 
On Ian's bike, they find a bag with the fancy clothes and the receipts, so they can keep them without guilt thanks to one of their watchers. While they go to the location of their next heir, Sydney calls Tommy to ask about Venus' intentions and freaks out when she notices Venus is now on the top 10. Moments later, Ian and Venus make it to a tattoo parlor, where Venus must get a tattoo that Ian has to choose for her. He looks at various designs and doesn't like anything, so he designs it himself and asks the tattoo artist to fix it. Venus gets on the chair and while she suffers under the needle, her follower count keeps growing. To distract her from the pain, Ian plays a song she likes and hears the story of her dead brother. Once the tattoo is done, Venus looks at it on the mirror and is pleasantly surprised to discover a lighthouse, like in the name of her favorite book. Meanwhile at a party, Sydney notices Venus keeps getting fans and her jealousy grows. Tommy is watching all this and finally loses his patience, so he calls a hacker friend for help to find more information about Ian because he doesn't appear on any public site. His friend sends him a passkey to access the dark web and he finds out that Ian played the game before. In fact he was involved in an incident that killed a player. Freaking out, Tommy calls Venus to warn her but she won't pick up. Back to Ian and Venus, they get a new dare asking Ian to drive the bike blindfolded at 60 miles per hour through New York City and Venus to give him the right directions for $10,000. Venus refuses to do it, but at that moment Ty stops by to take a picture of her with a car decal. After he leaves, Ian convinces Venus to do the challenge. When they accept it, a girl at the party puts it on the TV so everyone can watch. Ian covers his helmet with the decal and they take off when Venus confirms the light is green. The driving is rather clumsy and they get too close to another car, so Venus has to push them off to regain control. With a mixture of leaning against his body and words, Venus guides him through the streets as Ian goes faster and faster. They almost hit a red light, but Venus makes Ian go faster and they cross just in time. After going through a tunnel, they finally finish the countdown and Ian clears his vision to stop the right bike before he crashes against a gate. Afterward the duo celebrates with a kiss. At the party, Sydney is incredibly jealous and asks her watchers to give her a better dare. At that moment she's found by Ty, who asks to team up. Sydney turns him down and Ty gives her his number before leaving. Meanwhile Nancy calls Tommy, wanting to know if her account is being hacked because she keeps receiving money from anonymous tippers. Tommy makes up a story about Venus playing poker online and getting good earnings from it to get Nancy off their backs. Back to the duo, they have fun on a carousel while bonding over their family situations. This is being recorded and a jealous Sydney tries calling Venus, who doesn't pick up. Ian asks her why and Venus starts explaining how Sydney always puts her down and uses her to feel better about her own insecurities. This embarrasses Sydney in front of everyone and now her watchers are teaming up to think of a dangerous dare for her. At the party, two guys show up with a ladder and Sydney gets a new dare, she must use the ladder to walk from one building to another. She's drunk and dizzy but decides to try anyway. Sydney takes the first steps rather clumsily and falls to her hands and knees to make it easier while everyone else films. However she must be the one filming for the dare to count, so she stands up again to take her phone from her pocket. Everyone keeps yelling advice and it makes her more nervous, causing her to accidentally drop the phone to the ground. Nerve immediately announces Sydney failed the dare and she's out of the game. All over the country, people are also failing at very dangerous dares, like failing a jump over the train platforms and getting caught on a fire. Ty ends up on train tracks and stays still in the middle, letting a train pass over him without getting hurt. His dare is completed and now he's on first place. As more people fail, only a few players are left. Soon Ian and Venus make it to the party and are received like celebrities. When Venus hears Sydney lost, she goes to check on her and finds her getting naughty with JP. This triggers an argument as both girls start insulting each other for their betrayals. Sydney even throws a jab at Venus' dead brother, crossing the line. At that moment Venus gets a dare asking her to complete Sydney's failed challenge for $15,000. Eager for revenge, Venus immediately accepts and goes to the ladder. Venus is way less clumsy than Sydney and by only needing a few pauses, she quickly walks on the ladder and reaches the neighboring building. As everyone celebrates, Nerve announces Venus is in first place. Afterward Tommy finds her and tells her that her fight with Sydney has been staged by Ian because that's his dare. Furious, Venus runs out of the party and Ian follows her. People keep on recording them, so Ian drags her to the elevator and explains this is more complicated than it looks, but he can't tell her until later. Venus doesn't believe him and is tired of the risks, so she runs out of the building and finds a cop to explain the game to him. The officer can't see what crime is being committed and watchers nearby start calling her a snitch. At the same time, Nancy discovers her bank account has been emptied. She calls Venus, who is panicking because Ian just left in his bike. At that moment Ty shows up and apologizes before punching Venus, knocking her out for his dare. Moments later, Venus wakes up in a storage unit, where a few lights reveal the phrase snitches get stitches and a computer screen. The robotic voice explains Venus is now their prisoner for breaking the rules. They control her life and her family, which they prove by showing tons of important documents on the screen. The only way for her to leave the game now is to win the final round, for which she must take the Staten Island Ferry. Then she kicks the unit door to leave, hiding when she sees someone nearby. 
Suddenly Ian appears in front of her and finally explains everything. Ian and Ty played nerve last year in Seattle, and one of their friends died when they tried climbing a crane. They immediately went to the police but nobody took them seriously, calling it an accident. Nerve punished them for breaking the rules and their family's lives were ruined. They messed with Ian's dad's job, leaked photos of his sister online, and stole their identities. There's a hidden level after watcher and player called Prisoner, and both Ty and Ian are trapped in it. The only way to leave the game is to win the finale, and now Venus is in the same situation. Then Ian explains he's made a deal with the watchers and they gave him a hard dare on purpose to bump Ty to third place, that way Ian and Venus can go to the finals and Ian can let her win. Venus doesn't like the idea but lets Ian go to his dare while she calls Tommy for help. He's currently with Sydney, who has heard the truth and agrees to meet as well. The girls hug and apologize when they meet before discussing the situation. Venus wants to go to the finale but she also wants to destroy the game, so she asks Tommy to change Nerve's code and reveal all the watchers' identities. She also sends Sydney on a secret mission as part of the plan. Meanwhile Ian is repeating the challenge that made them lose last time, he goes to the roof of a very high building and hangs from a crane for 5 seconds with just one hand while a drone records him. He's terrified but he manages to do it, even giving the camera the finger at the end. Now he's in the finals. After Sydney finishes her part of the plan, she goes with Tommy to meet with his hacker friends, who are already working on hacking Nerve's open source code. At the same time Nancy finally finds the game and calls Tommy, who invites her to join her at the hacker's den for an explanation. Venus takes the ferry and someone drops a paper bag for her. Ian finds masked watchers in the train who takes him to the next destination. Eventually Venus makes it to a stadium and the guard asks for a ticket, so she reveals the gun from the bag. As thousands of people log in to watch the final dare, Venus goes inside and notices tons of anonymous watchers wearing masks. Ian soon arrives too and their final dare is to shoot each other. Whoever shoots first wins the game and they only have 20 seconds, so the hackers need to hurry. Ian tells Venus to shoot and she does so but at the ground, so nobody wins. Everyone insults them and Venus tries to leave, but a watcher shoots in the air to stop her. The watcher removes his mask and reveals to be Ty, who volunteers to shoot Ian. As the crowd cheers, Venus runs to get between them and calls the watchers cowards for hiding behind masks and screen names, finding bravery only in groups. Ty dismisses her words so Venus dares him to shoot. As Ty seeks the crowd's approval, a poll appears on their phones and everyone votes in favor of Ty shooting Venus, so he proceeds to do exactly that. Ian screams and catches Venus falling body. At that moment the hackers finally finish their job and everybody's real names appear on their phones with a message telling them that they're accomplices to murder. Terrified, people all over the country start signing out and leaving the stadium, not leaving a single server on for nerve to exist in. A furious Ian tries to shoot Ty, but suddenly Venus wakes up and stops him. It turns out calling Ty was Sydney's part of the plan, all along his gun had blanks and Venus' blood is fake. Ty and Ian now can finally reconcile. At the den, everyone celebrates and the hackers even get Nancy's money back. After leaving the stadium, Ian admits his real name is Sam and the couple kisses. Sometime later, Venus is happily attending CalArts and dating Ian while keeping a healthier friendship with Tommy and Sydney.